Hey there, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I drew Gamora from the Guardians of the Galaxy in colored pencil. I'm using Prismacolor Premier pencils along with a black polychromos and a white Karen Dash luminance. I am also using OMS to blend. All of the materials and the colors that I used will be listed below in the description. My reference photo was pretty dark so I didn't have to add a lot of color to the eyes. I used black and brown and a touch of yellow making sure to keep the highlights without any color. Because I had used such a dark reference photo there wasn't a lot of detail. I wasn't worried about her eyelashes and she doesn't have any eyebrows so that made the eye section a lot easier. The green skin was less of a challenge than I thought it would be. In the end I realized that the best way to tackle this would be just making sure that my highlights and shadows were all in the right place. As long as your values and contrast are similar to the reference photo it's going to be more realistic even if you are drawing a green chick. Even though I was using a darker reference photo my brain kept telling me that I was going too dark when in fact I needed to go even darker. The shadows on the right side of her face were almost black, so I went with black and layered my darkest green on top of that. For the mouth, I used the same colors as the skin and I focused on making sure that the line between the two lips was dark enough and that the shadows were in the right place. I added some lighter lines and highlights where I could, but for the most part I just needed to get the shape right and make sure that the skin blended well into the lips so that there wasn't such a harsh edge. I didn't want her to look like she was just wearing green lipstick. Once I was almost done with the eyes, nose, and mouth, I started on the skin on the rest of her face. I used a light hand to get the first layers down over the entire piece, trying to be careful not to flatten out the tooth of my paper so I can add more layers after I blend. I've got to be honest, I did start questioning my colors after the first blending. While I was aiming for a tough green chick, all I could see on my paper was Fiona from Shrek and that wasn't what I had in mind when I started. I kept going though because this was actually my second attempt at drawing Gamora and I wasn't about to start all over. Again. To blend all the colors together, I used the lightest green that I had, the same way a lot of people use the white colored pencil to even out skin tones. I'm not actually burnishing yet. I'm going to keep adjusting all of my shadows until I'm happy with where they are before I move on to her neck and shoulder. When you're blending with OMS, make sure that you don't have too much on your brush. One of the biggest mistakes that I used to make was not dabbing it out on a paper towel and drying it out enough before I tried to blend. It can lift all of the color back up and it is super hard to fix. It takes a lot more time to try and fix it than to actually dry it out the first time. The only way to get better at that though is to practice, so the more you do it you'll get a feel of how much is too much on your brush. Once I'm happy with the face I move on to the neck and the shoulders. I use the exact same colors and techniques as I did on her face except for it goes a lot faster because there's not as much details to worry about as there are on the face. You just have to keep layering and blending. Even when you think she looks like Shrek, just keep going. The chest part is actually a good place to practice your blending. You just have to keep blending in light layers, keeping track of where the shadows are because the shadows on the collarbone and around her throat add some dimension and a more realistic look. Again, she was looking like someone was going to drop a house on her and steal her shoes. I could not get used to using green for a skin tone. But all kidding aside, I'm actually really glad that I drew Gamora though. She's one of my favorite characters in the movies aside from Groot and Rocket. The only thing that I'm concerned about on the chest is keeping her skin as smooth as I can. It's a little tough with the odorless mineral spirits, but I prefer it to burnishing. In my opinion, OMS gets you the saturation that you need faster, making it so that you're wasting less pencil and not giving your hands such a workout. I keep putting down more layers and blending more. Just like on the face, I'm using OMS and my lightest green to blend all the colors together and make it match better with her face. The strap on her shirt was a dark brown leather, so I used black and darker brown. I also added a layer of indigo blue and Tuscan red underneath the black so that it wouldn't look so flat and boring. Her hair was almost more intimidating than the green skin. With my reference photo being so dark, I couldn't see a lot of the details, like where the part of her hair was or if she even had one. I ended up using several photos of her to get a better idea of placement and color. I started out by mapping all the shadows in different sections of hair. I'm not going for hyper realistic so I'm not worried about individual strands of hair. Only the sections and the directions that they're going in. In my original reference her hair was super red but after looking at other reference photos I decided I wanted to go a more magenta feel. Admit it. You doubted me. You were like, oh no, Christina. That's not going to work. You're never going to make that weird stuff look like her hair. But it's cool. I forgive you. Because I wasn't 100% sure that it was going to work either. That's kind of the fun of it though, because you don't know that something isn't going to work until you try it. Moving on. All of the hair is done in pretty much the exact same way. I like to get the darks as dark as I can, as fast as I can. 
and then I put my different shades of color in and I blend with odorless mineral spirits. After that's dry, I come back in and I deepen the shadows and add a bit of highlights, specifically paying attention to the light source of my reference photo. For the first layers, I'm not even worried about my pencil lines or even which way they're going because my odorless mineral spirits is going to blend almost all of that out anyway. When I get closer to being finished, I'll start to add more of the final details and then I worry about which direction my lines are going in. I try not to go overboard with the details because I'm not aiming for perfect. I tighten up the areas where the hair met the skin and I hadn't blended it the best, fixed any last minute touch-ups. I hope that this video encourages you to draw things that are fun to you, even if they are a bit out of your comfort zone. I had a lot of fun with this one and I was super happy with how it turned out. If you liked my video, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.